Hello, welcome to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. I'm your host, Dr. James J.C. Cooley, and I'm thrilled to death. First of all, thrilled for being here. Second, I'm so thrilled about the guests that we have on today, the show today. She has been on the show before, absolutely magnificent young lady that's doing so many great things out there. You know, so many great things out there. And she's going to share a lot of these things that she's doing today. You know, she's doing a lot of great things, especially, especially when it comes to uh, the in indigenous group, the Indians, all that, all uh, Indian country. I mean, just, she just a remarkable individual. And I'm talking no other than the one and only Ruth and Thorn. You know, so uh, so Michelle and I are always excited to get Ruth on the show because it's uh, it's a learning experience plus getting an understanding of history and some of the things that we don't think about, especially in America, uh, that uh, potentially happened before. I know it did, and that's continued to happen. And but uh, my thing is this. We all are children of God or the spirit, whatever you want to call it. We all are here to help each other up. And we all are here to lift each other up. And uh, education is always important to me that we're able to teach and learn and continue to pass down from generation to generation. So I tell you, uh, we're talking about Ruth Ann Thorne. And today, what the title of the show? is helping tell the Native American story to preserve their culture and history. And the purpose of today's show, and yes, Michelle is not here right now. She's doing other things. The purpose of the show is getting to know Ruth Ann Thorne, a pioneer businesswoman, a gallery owner. I'm just a magnificent person. And, you know, this, uh, she document films, filmmaker. She, when I tell you, she do it all. She do it all. <laughs> she do it all. Uh, discuss bringing the Native American culture to the forefront. Also, discuss the opening of her new her new EC gallery, and uh, in San Diego. I can't wait to get back to uh, San Diego because I want to go visit myself. I want to go see it. So, uh, <laughs> and this last thing that we're going to talk about that's so important. And her and I was talking uh, in the green room. It's about land back, land back. And I'm going to let her explain all that uh, to you. So wherever you're watching the show at, was on E360 Television, Transverse TV, uh, YouTube, LinkedIn, over 25, 30 other live streaming network. Welcome. If you want to be part of the conversation, all you have to do is go to the comments. You can ask this great, great guest of mine any question that you like. Or, you know, if you just want to join in, just join in. So, uh, just like I said, a little bit about uh, Ruth Ann. And I'm going to let her tell you all about that because I'm going to bring on. There's so many, many things that, that she's doing. And uh, she's going to tell you a little bit about her. And she then we're going to dive directly into what we're talking about. No, I, yeah, I, can't, I can't wait no more. Let's bring on Ruth Ann. How, how you doing today? How you doing today? <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm doing amazing, especially after that buildup. Wow. <laughs> that wasn't when, a when build up. You... <laughs> You're doing so many things out there. Come on now. I follow you. I, I watch you on, on, on television. I watch you on YouTube. I watch you on everything. So uh, oh. <laughs> you doing what a whole an honor. Lot. What an honor. And when you were talking, I was I kept looking around like who who's he talking about? <laughs> so. It's such an honor to be here, and thank you once again for having me on your show. You, yeah. you yourself are a great uh, blessing to the world, and you do lift up. I, I follow you as well, and I, um, I listen to you in the car mostly. And <laughs> you know, especially if I'm having one of those down days, uh -huh. I'll just I, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna have to turn on Dr. James here, and I and I'm always uplifted. You know, it's uh. Miss having you on is uh, can you tell our viewers and our listeners uh, that might have missed uh, when you was on last time a little bit about uh, Ruth Ann Thorne 
some of the things you're doing, where you grew up. Just uh, you, you got it for three minutes. Okay, certainly. Well, um, I'm Ruth Ann Thorne. I'm a uh, tribal member at the Rincon Band of Luceno Indians. And um, I grew up here in Southern California, often on the reservation. Uh, my dad has lived there, you know, from the inception. And I actually currently reside on the property that was my great grandfather's. So it's just a great honor, I think, to represent uh, Native people, not just my tribe, but a lot of people do not recognize that there were a hundred million of us on this northern continent, and now we are the smallest minority group. So I think our stories are very important. My passion is to tell those stories through the arts. So I've been an art dealer for almost three decades, and I've owned and operated art galleries. And I feel like sometimes um, artists are able to tell stories through a visual that is very hard to tell when um, some of those stories are, are difficult. But when you're showing a painting, it's an easier story to tell. Um, so that's that's pretty much my background. You know, so uh, Ruth, Ruth Ann, can, can you tell uh, uh, just what are some of the funnest memories uh, that you had growing up, you know, and I'm talking about whether you was uh, with the tribe, or was he just uh, out run? Can you can you talk about that a little bit? Well, I think when I was a, a young child, I had some really. I mean, we all we all. I'm, I feel like if, if you're healthy, you pull out the things that are um, positive. I think we've all, you know, most of us in, in our young lives have things probably that were tough. Um, but I, a couple of really great uh, memories. One is um, with my great grandfather on the reservation on the land that I currently reside on driving around in his tractor and he still spoke he spoke Spanish English and he spoke Luceno and I didn't get a lot of times with him um, but when I did they were very meaningful because he took that time to share native culture with me and those were very intimate times and I think you don't really recognize how special that is until you get a little older and you're able to reflect but one of the things that I was a takeaway for me was his work ethic. So he had this piece of land. Uh, most people, Native people, were living off of government rations at that time because most of the reservations were in remote areas that nobody wanted. That's why we got that land, because nobody really wanted it. And so, but he had taken that land and he had planted every single orange tree on that property he almost knew them by name. And I think I remember him telling me names of each tree. And he worked that land all by himself um, and grew the most amazing oranges. Even Starkist bought some of his oranges. Um, so learning, you know, that hard work ethic has always been something that's pushed me forward in my life. So I've been fortunate. Wow. You know, so Ruth, I'm very excited about the uh, title of the show, uh, Help and Tell the Native American Story to Preserve Their Culture and History. Uh, why did you pick this topic? And I got a video I want to show everybody. So I'll let you uh, comment on that first. Okay. I think sometimes in life, topics pick you. <laughs> and if you're, you know, I don't know if I really picked the topic. I always say that the spirit and the ancestors um, called me to do what I'm doing today. And so I have been filming a series called This is Indian Country. And it started out, I, I had a, a documentary series called Art of the City prior to this. And it was about artists and it dovetailed into what I do as a business, really documenting and telling the stories of these great artists that have impacted the world. And then I started interviewing native artists and all artists are incredible but I just had this epiphany of the importance of telling the story of the people that are still here. Um, you know, we as native people, no matter how much of the blood we have in our veins, we are the product of the greatest genocide that has happened in the last 200 years. So a hundred million of us resided on this Northern continent. That's a third of the amount of people that reside here now. And we are now the smallest minority group as enrolled tribal members. 
And so a lot of people, when they think about who we are as Native people, first of all, lots of people don't even know we still exist. And then if they do, we have these um, stereotypes that have been put on us, such as being um, alcoholics or um, being not that smart, that we speak in one syllable words. And a lot of that propaganda was pushed down through media um, from our government, unfortunately, to really make us seem like less than people. And that's usually what happens during a genocide is you take a group of people and you make them less than human. And so now there are these amazing, resilient people, I happen to be one of them, that came from nothing. You'll never really meet a native person that was born with a silver spoon in their mouth and they're doing incredible things. So this is Indian country really um, explores the people that are here in various different professions and different things that they're doing. So I've interviewed um, James Beard award-winning chefs, supermodels that have been on the cover of Vogue magazine, along with grandmas that have um, for generations sewed quilts to give to veterans. I'm getting ready to interview the first native woman that went into space, Nicole Mann. And the list goes on and on. But what they have in common is that they're still holding on to their native traditions and their roots, but they are not victims. They are victors. They've overcome some of the greatest tragedies about having their, their whole lives of their families torn apart. But within that, it hasn't stopped them. So I'm flipping the script by interviewing these people and showing that we're funny, we're having a good time, we're working hard, but we are um, far from victimhood at this point. Wow. <clears throat> you are doing wonderful things with your filmmaking, telling the story, keeping uh, it up front uh, uh, with, the, with the culture and yes, uh, genocide. Uh, I believe that. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I don't want to talk about that that much, but uh, that's what happens over the time, and uh, the stories need to be told. History need to be kept fresh up front, so that uh, future generations will know where they came from. I tell you, we're gonna take a station break, but when we come back. We're going to pick it up from there, and I'm going to show that little clip, and we're going to talk. And Ruth Ann got a whole lot of great things that she wants to share with us. If you want to be part of the conversation, just go to the comments and ask any questions. Like, yes, your life. I'm Dr. James J.C. Cooley. We'll see you shortly after the break. Drunk to you. Just like 
Hello, welcome back to the James Cooley Show. It's your life, and I got my absolutely wonderful guest here, Grief and Thorn. And, uh, you know, uh, just uh, every time I get a chance to at least uh, watch her, uh, her stuff on YouTube and all of these other great things that she's doing, I mean, I just lock in and follow, uh, follow her. <laughs> I, uh, I think you might want to do the same thing as well. And we're going to give you some contacts where you can lock in and, and follow this great, great woman as well. You know, so if you want to be part of this conversation, I had to do it. Just go to the comments, ask this great lady any question that you like. And I promise you, I promise you, we'll get you an answer. I promise. Brief, I just want to pick it up real quick uh, because I'm getting ready to show that video and you just explaining about a uh, little bit about the history uh, and why it's important to keep uh, the culture and everything up front so uh, that uh, people today can understand and also future generations uh, will understand that, uh, you know, tough times has occurred and will continue to occur, but we have to be able to push past those and we have to be able to understand that uh, Everyone needs to be educated. Everyone need to understand of uh, their portion, their culture, and history. Can you yes. pick it up uh, one minute before I sh uh, show this uh, great video? Absolutely. So this is a 12-episode series. You're going to see the trailer for it. And we started at the tip of Washington State and traveled all the way down to my neck of the woods here in San Diego. Uh, we went into what I call the city Indians, into urban areas and interviewed uh, people there. And then we went to the reservations in the various states. Um, just a fascinating group of people. And the, the idea is to really uh, remove stereotypes. You're going to see people from all different walks of life. And rather than showing the sad Indian story, which is what we get to see a lot of, um, I always call it kind of um, the bummer of, of what's happened to us. You get to see a lighter side and you get to see people that are creating in an incredible space. So it's uh, it was an honor. And that I think is propelling me to my next 12 episodes, which will be East Coast Tribes. Wow. I can't wait to show uh, our viewers this. Here we go. A okay. hundred million native indigenous people lived on this Northern American continent that we call Turtle Island. Now we are the smallest minority group in the United States. <laughs> and we're still here. Join me as we travel to meet the tribes across Native America. I am Ruth Ann Thorne, and this is Indian Country. I should have the end there. <laughs> so you're taking this space back is really what's happened here, right? We don't have to follow the colonial model that was set in front of us. Yeah. We can really understand the teachings and learnings of our ancestors and start to bring that back and do it through this food. I get emotional thinking about um, the impact that my grandmother had because she didn't get to see me as a black IP. She didn't get to see a lot of these wins. Mm -hmm. But most of all, she didn't get to see me represent for our indigenous communities. And that for me is, it's everything. It's like riding a horse. In my saddle, I got my reins. You're killing it, girl. It you really crazy. are. The fact that you have that humility, that even though you've been on Vogue, I saw you. You know, staying grounded in my culture, you know, being surrounded by my people helps me stay grounded, stay true to who I am. I feel like I'm your auntie. Going, <laughs> yeah, go ahead, girl, keep doing that. Now, you maybe might be eating rabbit in about three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love that. <laughs> oh, we I, had I, a good time. <laughs> wow, wow, you know. So, it's, so 
Uh, why don't you tell our viewers um, how you got started um, with, and I know you just completed a 12 part series of that. Uh, can you tell them a little bit of what prompted you to go out and produce these films and produce these uh, television things and all the other stuff that you're doing as it relate uh, to the tribes? Well, I think in, at, at our core, uh, Native Indigenous people, we're storytellers. Our, our languages um, were not written down. You know, we, we told our, our uh, history to each other verbally. And so that, that's just part of who we are as Native people. So my passion for storytelling through film, I think, has just really grown over time. And it's really fueled by being more involved in my Native community. Um, I, love, I love our people. And then when I go to other states, I get to learn about other cultures, even though I'm from San Diego and I'm, um, you know, California native here. It's fascinating when I go like to Washington or Oregon or even Northern California, where we are very different in a lot of ways. And so I feel like I'm bringing the viewer in to learn about a culture that I don't know anything about either. Different ways of looking at the world. Um, the one thing I think we do have in common is that we definitely have a connection with this land. We've been on this land for 23,000 years documented. And so our DNA has a communication with the land that we've been a steward of. Um, and so I think at the end of the day, it's just really um, the love of people, the love of hearing how they've overcome adversity and ultimately how they're giving back through their lives to the world. You, you mentioned uh, the land, and we're going to talk about that uh, in, a, in a little bit. But um, can you tell us uh, about the challenges that might be out there in telling the story and in keeping the younger uh, tribal members in, in the world involved that they truly understand, that they need to understand the history and be able to pass that down to future future generations and tell them uh, the importance of ensuring that we exist. <laughs> right. No, I think I think what you're talking about, I mean, that's the core is that there's so few of us left um, that a lot of the stories have been lost. Even the language has been lost. Uh, my great grandfather that I referred to earlier, he was sent to residential school where they beat the Indian out of him. So the idea was to have you re you relinquish your culture and your ways and the, everything that you had grown up with and to um, assimilate into the then um, colonization. It wasn't even, I wouldn't even call it necessarily American, but um, the idea of you know, becoming something that you are not. And so in that, a lot of people, you know, we, so on my dad's side, I'm Luceno, and on my mom's side, I have immigrant blood. My grandfather on my mother's side is from Shanghai, and my grandmother on my mother's side is from Holland. So I feel like I have the best of both worlds because I can understand the idea of immigration, people coming to this country, but I also understand the idea of having a country that has been overthrown and has been, um, you know, colonized. And those are very different places to come from. And so the people that are indigenous to this land really have a lot to give to the world. There's been a lot of problems with the um, ecology of how we take care of animals, how we take care of the land that has been overlooked by throwing away native wisdom. And now we're at a place, and it's not just on this northern continent, but it's global, where the few indigenous communities that are still left and, and have that wisdom, the world really needs to start paying attention. Because for thousands of years, we took care of this land and we didn't have the problems that we have now with the ecosystem, with water, with um, all the, you know, all of the things that we're, we're facing, global warming, 
Those things never happened because we understood as Native people that we were not above creation, that we were part of creation. And, you know, oh, by the way, we're the only part that if we disappear, everything else gets along just fine without us. <laughs> A lot of people don't actually think about that. Um, so going back to preserving culture, it's not just preserved for our people, but it's preserved for all people. And that's why it's really greatly important to the world. Wow. So, Ruben, you have owned seven uh, galleries and I probably still own a lot of them right now, but you opening up a new one. Can you tell our viewers the importance of telling the stories of the different varieties of artistic cultures and I mean, all of the great things that you do at your galleries and that you go on the road doing. Let's talk about that a little bit. Sure. So this will be the eighth gallery that I've opened in my young life. Yeah, I feel <laughs> like I'm getting younger. I have to say that because, you know, it's a it's a big undertaking. Um, it's a I say it's a young it's a young person's game. So that means I have to get younger every year. But I just opened this gallery in uh, San Diego in downtown in the gas lamp, which is a historic quarter. It's the it's called the historic gas lamp. And I am the only native owned business there. And in the and I've been there before I had a gallery prior, but I never really pushed forward um, the fact that I'm a native business owner. But now I am. And it's important because we have a movement called land back and you know, initially we would think, oh, you know, we want the land back. Well, we'd like the land back, but it's more than that. It's about having a presence and taking space as a native person that was once our land. So in the gas lamp, that was um, a place where the Kumeyaay tribes lived. We are a neighboring tribe, we're Luceno. Um, but my goal is to bring more native representation into areas like historic gas lamps so that when you're talking about history, you're actually bringing the culture back into areas where it was um, they people lived. And another thing that um, I'm working on with the city, which they've been so gracious, is the idea of bringing in sculptures that would be um, would show land acknowledgement, and then it would show all of the tribes that reside within an, an area. So San Diego has 15 tribes here within a 60 mile radius. And I'm working now with the city on doing a public piece that will give um, acknowledgement to those tribes. So are, are you working with the, the other tribes uh, collectively uh, uh, to tell the story so that uh, no one tribe feel left out? Exactly. So the, the sculpture that I'm working on will have a, a land acknowledgement and then it will have all of the actual, um, we have, every tribe has almost like a seal, a tribal seal as a sovereign nation and those seals will then be placed onto that. So every, you know, everybody gets acknowledged. So, so what are some of the uh, I, I'm talking about the new one that you just opened up and recited uh, in San Diego. What are some of the arts or uh, paintings that you have there and there? And I know you continuously building on to that. Well, um, from the native community, I have a native veteran. Um, his name is Ruben Chato. He comes in. You'll If you come down, he's usually there on the weekends painting. Uh, he's an incredible artist. And then um, the gentleman I have behind me, um, he is, let me see if I can lift up my computer, you can kind of see. Oh yeah, okay. Okay, that's Jeremy Salzar, and he is also another um, native artist. I have, you know, I have a whole roster of them, but what's beautiful is, for instance, we have Comic Con coming up. It's the largest Comic Con in existence. It started in San Diego and we have it's a madhouse. We have over 100,000 people in three days that will be walking in front of the gallery. So now I'm putting together a group of artists that are all Native to have that Native representation within the space. So to me, that's land back. 
Um, one of the gentlemen that you saw on my trailer there is Taboo from Black Eyed Peas. He just did a comic book that is a native indigenous version of Spider-Man. So things like that where we are having a voice, we're showing up, we're saying, you know what, we're here and we're contributing to the world like we did for thousands of years. You know, I think that's one thing that a lot of people don't know that, you know, this northern continent, we traded with people from all over the world for thousands of years. We were an actual country. Um, when we discovered Columbus because he got lost and he thought he fell on India, um, a lot of people don't realize that, you know, we had had plenty of traders coming through this land. You know, hold that thought. Plenty of traders coming through this land. We're going to take a station break, but I'm going to pick it back up uh, because we got so, so much more that we want to lead off from there, pick it up and talk about a lot of other things. And if you want to be part of this conversation with this absolutely fantastic guest, all you have to do is just go to the comments, ask her any questions that you like, and I promise you we'll get you an answer. Get your NASA. It's your life. I'm Dr. James J.C. Cooley. We'll be back shortly with some more of Ruth and Dawn. Dingley here, producer of The James Cooley Show, It's Your Life. And the new audio version of James' book, Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet, is a must-have. James shares his true life story of struggle and success in America. It's both a cautionary tale and a roadmap to achieving the American dream. Get the new audio version of Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet, by James Cooley on Amazon.com or wherever audiobooks are sold. Hello, welcome back to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. And, you know, uh, just sitting back here, just listening to this great guest. Uh, and that just tell the story. And she's doing so many things. And, uh, you know, encouraging each and every last one of us that regardless what people might think about you, what they might say about you, wherever you might be on a totem pole today, that's not where you can end up if you want to continue to grow. You know, you want to continue to grow. You want to get out there. You want to do positive things and help others out. You can do it. Uh, there will be many naysayers, uh, Ruben, just going to tell us just because of the color of our skin, just because of our religion, just because of the background that, that we can't. But we know that we can do anything that we set our mind to. You know, so. Absolutely. <laughs> You know, so so Ruben, you you mentioned something a few minutes ago uh, about uh, you being the only uh, tribal owner uh, in San Diego gas lamp district. Uh, what is what are we doing to encourage others to follow in that footsteps and to get an understanding that they can do this as well 
and, and many of them need to do this. Mm -hmm. what, what, what are we doing to encourage them to do that? Well, I think we have more opportunities than we've ever had with economic development. As you know, the last time I was on the show, I talked about being involved in economic development with our tribe, building businesses and encouraging that next generation to follow suit. But ultimately, even if you have money and you have the ability, you know, through your, whether you have a gaming facility or you know, you have grants, various things to send your children to university to get a good education and to learn how to run a business. There's this one thing that still needs to be dealt with, and it's a very real thing, and it's called generational trauma. Anybody who comes from a background where there's been trauma, such as genocide or slavery or things like that, um, it has been scientifically shown that just like we inherit the color of our, our parents' eyes or our grandparents or the color of our skin or our height, we also, um, we also um, inherit the, um, I'd say, um, cellular in the cellular level, whether or not their emotional state was compromised. And so the the idea of having this fear that's been inherited is a very real thing and that generational trauma has to be overcome. And until that happens, part of the healing of generational trauma is the acknowledgement of wrongs that have been done. And Native people are really demanding now that the history books be changed to tell the real truth of the fact that, you know, of what happened. Now we can't change it. And, you know, for us to dwell on it and become victims and say, well, we can't do anything because of these bad things that happened to us. That's not necessarily the facts. What the facts are is to tell really what the truth is. When you have a nation that is, you know, the United States of America, and we call ourselves a proud nation and we honor our forefathers and people who built enterprises and we erect statues and, and say that, oh, these are such great people. As a business owner, I have to ask the question, what could any one of us as entrepreneurs do with free land and free labor? I honestly do not think that it would take any genius if somebody gave me free land and free labor, give me about a year and I'm going to tell you that I'm going to have some really amazing enterprise. And so Native people, we've had our land and our resources ripped out from underneath us. And now we are asked to have our children read history books that are inaccurate. And so a good place to start with generational healing from this trauma is to just start basically telling the truth of what really happened to acknowledge the wrong so healing can happen. That is, in my opinion, the foundation of any generation being able to get beyond horrible things that have happened. You know, when you, that's just my opinion about it. I 1 million percent agree with you because as you see, especially in the United States right now. Um, it's been a, a lot of pulling the truth from the history, the books, teaching, education. I, and I really don't understand why anybody would not want to tell the truth about uh, a society or race or uh, all of those type of things. It doesn't make any sense to me. You cannot take away something that already happened. You might as well teach um, our youth and our young adults and teach everybody uh, the truth. They're going to find out the truth anyway. You know, so I, I 1 million percent agree with me on that. And I, I think we need to start. Uh, I mean, I, I think we, we have politicians that want to brainwash everybody and said that didn't exist. This culture didn't exist. The only thing existed was is when 
America was created. Uh, <laughs> uh, we came in existing as a country. That's, that's, that's not true. Right. So, so uh, that so if that's the foundation, you can educate a group of people and you can give them um, better living circumstances. You can give them a better home. You can give them nicer clothes. You can you can do all of these things. But studies have shown that is not what makes a change for people, because within our spirit, when our spirit and our um who we are as human beings has been, it's been damaged. That restoration needs to happen at some level. You know, a lot of times that can happen through a spiritual awakening um, where you start to understand your value as, as a spiritual person. Um, But also sometimes those things need to happen when there's been a trauma, you know, take for instance, somebody who's been a victim of some type of a crime, whether there's been a rape victim or some, somebody has murdered someone. A big part of our judicial system is for the people who have been victimized to be able to face their victor, the person who hurt them. And when that person acknowledges it, there's a lot more ability for that person to heal within that. And that's just something that is proven. That's why they do that. And as Native people, if we can have more people understand and acknowledge what has happened here, I think that's that's really the foundation of the lifting up of this next generation. And, you know, we see it. The reason that I know this is because I work with a lot of the tribes that have casinos where people are making a considerable amount of money but you go onto the reservation and for some people, nothing's changed because that isn't really the way change happens. And so I think the beauty of it is, is there's more people that are our advocates than have ever been before. Now we have things like we're now addressing residential schools. We're talking about what really happened up in First Nations in Canada. They've actually dug up, I think, over 10,000 unmarked graves. So those families can have healing. And the Canadian government has acknowledged these wrongdoings. The Catholic Church has acknowledged these things. And so that, to me, when you start really telling the truth about things, that allows people to be able to heal and put their head up high and do amazing things. So I know that seems like a far, like a long distance away about somebody becoming a business owner, but to be a business owner is a, you know, to be an entrepreneur, it's uh, not for the faint of heart. So you have to have a certain um, sense of, of who you are as a human being to put yourself out there when you're going to run a business because the deck is stacked against you when you run a business, right? Very few businesses make it through the first year, let alone 10. I'm now um, celebrating 27 years in business. So I'm really grateful for that. But every time I open a gallery, I still feel like, oh my gosh, do I even know what I'm doing? (laughs) Seriously, I'm always like, gosh, I hope we're here in a year. But that's just part of it. And uh, so anyway. I believe when you you, you do great work, you're a great person, uh, it, it just reflects, it just shows. And uh, Ruth Ann, you're going to be around a long time <laughs> <laughs> because everything that you touch uh, seems to turn to gold and it's going to continue uh, as long as uh, you want it to, meaning that you follow the spirit, you follow sure. the, follow your heart, follow God, for whatever that might be. We've got to take a station break. But when we come back, I want to talk about um, uh, imprint registry. I'm going to talk okay. about all of those great things and uh, and talk about some of the things. I'm talking about pick it up again with the the cable television, uh, you know, running uh, your series, and yeah, I, I want them to know everything, you know. So okay, uh, if you want to be part of this conversation, just go to the comments, ask this great lady any question you like, and we'll get it on the screen. It's your life. I'm Dr. James J.C. Cooley. We'll be back shortly after the break.
a chance to know who you are. And once you know who you are, you truly know who you are, love who you are. Love who you are. Your masterpiece. Love who you are. Love who you were born to be. Love, love me some me. That's what I'm talking about. When you leave high school, you gotta know today or tomorrow, or hopefully today, what your plans are. Hopefully, you know, there is no bad decision unless there is no plan. Create, collaborate, commit with confidence. Commit with what? Commit with what? And everything that you do. Life is a series of circles and cycles, phrases and stages. These experiences teach you the lessons of life. You can either ignore them or embrace them. Welcome to It's Your Life with James Cooley. James is a motivational speaker, author, military veteran, and founder of the J.C. Cooley Foundation. James is here to equip you to strive for greatness and overcome adversity. It's time to get you equipped today for the challenges of tomorrow. Now, here's the host of It's Your Life, James Cooley. Hello, welcome back to It's Your Life. Uh, I'm your host, Dr. James J.C. Cooley, with my absolutely amazing guest, Ruth Ann Thorne. And uh, I tell you, if you haven't learned something by now, that means you, you I don't know, you, you, you have, your ears have been closed. <laughs> but, but it's not, you know, it's not too late, because we still are getting ready to teach some more, at least she is. <laughs> you know, getting ready to teach some more, you know, so absolute pleasure having you on, Ruth Ann. Thank you. All of the great things that you're doing and encouraging others to go out and do great things. You know, so I want to talk about, uh, please tell our audience um, about Imprint Register and how it got started. So that, that has been, I think, probably one of the most challenging things I've been involved with because I am not, I don't come from the tech space. Um, and most of the things I get involved with, honestly, I don't really probably feel that I'm an expert at it. You know, whether it was art, I, I don't know if I mentioned that I had a beauty line, I do the filming. And so I just... I feel like there's something that needs to, to happen, meaning that there's a problem that needs to be solved. And imprint registry was one of those um, things and is ongoing to be created. So it is in essence, it's the first worldwide registry for artists where an artist can go onto the platform and they can authenticate their work firsthand. So rather than, um, you know, a lot of times there's forgeries, there's problems, specifically in Indian country, there's a lot of native, um, they call it native inspired artwork, which is not authentic native art. And so imprint registry allows a native person to go on, put their tribal card and show that they are in fact an enrolled tribal member and then they're able to go ahead and um, authenticate whether it's jewelry, artwork, pottery, all of those things. But it's also open to artists all over the world. So have, have uh, you had any challenges uh, as it relate to uh, imprint risk? Oh, yes. <laughs> and current challenges. So the main <laughs> challenge is when you're working with technology, you know, there's never been an opportunity except for in the last, I'd say, probably 10 years, but really currently you may have heard of uh, Web3 development. So Web3 is where everything is done via blockchain. And there's several different blockchains, but blockchain technology at its base is a place where when you put an entry onto that um, chain, almost like a um, entry that you would put in a ledger as a accountant, that can never be erased. So it's there for as long as the internet is there, it will be there. 
And the reason why that's so important is because now you have a place that you can put information that you don't have to worry about it ever being disappeared or also being compromised in any way. And so within that, that's where we get, you know, cryptocurrencies all on blockchain. But within that, artists have never really had a place that they could say 100%, this is my art. And now they do. And it's as simple as that. But with that, artists are also not the most uh, uh, technology-based people. And so we started out with one platform, and it's not me. It's a group of people. Um, I'm probably the least qualified to be on this team, even though I come from the art space. It's not the first time, by the way, that I've been the least qualified. But um, we've had to work through the platform two and three times, and we are currently working on it again to make it easier for people to navigate. Wow. You're doing so many things. I I, want to... I got to talk about uh, uh, the network uh, show that's coming up. Your twelve part series just is Indian country. You got it. Tell us. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so this shows on FNX, which is First Nations Experience. They're the largest network provider for Indigenous content, and they are the ones that have been so gracious to show Art of the City, and they are now showing this is Indian country. So we are in the middle of edit. We, um, we've edited two episodes and we will have all 12 done and they will show in November. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be very exciting. So, so uh, in November, uh, do they just go to the network or how, how would they? How would they yes. So if you go on to FNX.org, um, Frank FrankNathanXray.org, <coughs> excuse me. Um, you'll be able to sign up there and then they'll show you what affiliates are locally. So you can watch it on an uh, affiliate channel or you can live stream from your computer. I mean, besides my show, they have fantastic things on there as far as like all kinds of native people doing incredible things. They cover some of the big powwows. So it's just a really great place to be able to, um, you know, to watch that. Wow. You know, um, I want to talk real quickly because we're running out of time, but uh, you mentioned it. I, I was going to get to it. N8IV, your beauty uh, right. uh, products. And uh, and uh, just tell us a little bit about that. Where are they available for people to go and buy? Sure. So Native Beauty, like you said, spelled N, the number 8, IV. So a different way of spelling Native for a reason, beauty. Um, that's another land back. So if you go to Sephora or you go anywhere, Nordstrom's, Neiman Marcus, and you ask for the native products, native indigenous, there are zero. So you have African-American, you have Asian, you have all kinds of things, but we have no representation. And so that was the catalyst for starting a skincare line was because my 16-year-old daughter loves to go to Sephora now. And she's like, mom, how come there's no no native products here? So I helped um, bring this to market with her in mind, and she's actually a young entrepreneur helping me. But the main ingredient is acorn oil, and that's something that we've used for thousands of years. Acorn is the number one plant that we use as Native people. So you can get it online. Um, I'm currently working with Amazon to get an Amazon store, and I'm also working with Nordstrom, Sephora, Neiman Marcus, Saks Fifth Avenue, so um, if I get a contact, I'll have you guys, uh, sh- you know, rattle their cage a little bit and say, where's our native products? <laughs> you know, and that's what we stand here for. You know, Ruvan, this has been apps, an absolute pleasure. Always having you on the show. And just like I, I tell you, you got to open invitation. Next time uh, we're in San Diego in June or July, I would love to do a show, a live show at one of your galleries and and interview of course we got to have you and a couple of your artists and uh let's 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 look at doing something like that real soon well, i would love that we would be so honored and i'm just you know again i'm just honored to be on your show i love your positive energy and i love how you bring so much to all of us you know so thank you so much for taking the time to do this i know that it's a huge commitment and the world needs it so 
you're you're a great blessing to all everybody who listens. Hey, thank you so much. I want to thank you again for taking the time to come on the James Cooley Show. It's your life. Uh, again, we're gonna have you on real, real soon. I like to thank Dr. Michelle Cooley for always putting together an amazing show. I mean, uh, they. Most people don't know. I'm, uh, she writes all of the shows, put together everything. Uh, most important, I'd like to thank our viewers and our listeners for taking the time to tune in to the James Cooley Show, It's Your Life. As always, I want everybody to always dream big, think big, and be big at everything that you do. It's your life. I'm Dr. James J.C. Cooley. We'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same place.